So in this video, we're going to look at the USB to VGA adapter. So on the left side, I have the website open. This is the device that I bought in a local store. And as you can see here, if you connect a wire to the red port, then you will be able to use that as an, an antenna. And these are the compilation instructions. And that's where you can get the source code from. So if we use git clone, then we can easily get the source code and also compile it locally in our Ubuntu virtual machine. So this is a different video format that I'm trying to make it easier for myself to push out more videos for you guys. So first we need to make sure that we have libusb 1.0 installed and then we will create a new directory called build and enter that directory and run cmake and then install or configure it with the udev rules. The udev rules enables us to access the USB to VGA adapter without being root. And here we will make the source code into a program by using three simultaneous threads. And after that we install the program, run ldconfig, and next we will have to install the udev rules so we don't have to use sudo to run the fl2k commands. So before we continue, we have to make sure that we're using USB 3.0, otherwise we won't be able to transmit a signal, or at least not a very good signal. And we also need to make sure that the adapter is connected. Now before the adapter is connected, or before it works in the Kali VM or Ubuntu VM, we need to have it pop up as a new device, like a, like a storage device. So right now nothing is happening, so that means that it's not ready to be used. So this might take a while, and we also need to make sure that it's connected to the virtual machine. So here we can see a new device. And we can also take a look at that device specifically. And as you can see right now, it's connected as a mass storage device. So now that it has popped up with this directory, that means that it's ready to be used with FL2K. So now we're running the test program to see how many million samples per second we can run. Now this changes depending on your USB controller. And in case you get something like this with 145 million and minus 85 something, that means that you most likely have an error and you might have to reconnect the device or restart the virtual machine. You can also try with a smaller sample rate as that sometimes makes it easier to see if, you're, if it's your USB controller that's having a problem. But in this case, it still says 145 million, even though you set the sample rate to 100. So that means that there is an error. Now if we fast forward, I'm using an RTL SDR, and I'm using the big antenna on the lower right. The small antenna on the upper left is not really ideal for the USB to VGA adapter hack in this case, because it's a very weak signal coming from the adapter when we don't have a an antenna cable connected. So right now I've restarted the Ubuntu VM and I'm running the test program again. Now this took a bit of testing and reconnecting the device several times. So if it doesn't work the first time, keep trying until it works. 
So now you can see that we have 100 million samples per second and a PPM of 164. And it should increase. So that means that it's most likely working now if you see some, something like this on your screen. So if it looks like this, you're good to go and try the next steps by sending or broadcasting a wideband FM signal, for example. So if we take a look at the wiki site, we first need to find out which adapter to use or ALSA output device. So I've already copied it into here and replaced the commands from the wiki so they have been updated with the proper device for the ALSA output. ALSA is a sound card driver, I guess. That's the shortest explanation. Sound card driver and a device in Linux systems. So that's where your sound is coming out from. So now I'll be running a, an MP3 file without the VLC GUI. So now the music is playing in the background. And as, as soon as it's playing, then we can try and send the FM command or run it. So if it looks like something like this, that means that it's probably working, but it should be a continuous signal. But as I'm running this inside a virtual machine, that may be why I'm having some issues and I'm not getting a consistent signal, but sometimes it just randomly stops. But for, the, for this video, it's good enough for testing purposes. So as you can see, we did transmit an FM signal, even though it was a bit choppy at first, but it did work. So now we're transmitting a different signal at 160 megahertz. And as you can see, it's not far off. It's only 25 kilohertz off. So that's not too bad, I would say. But as you can see, it stopped here. In my case, I just rerun the program to start it again. So that may also happen in your case if you're using a USB controller that's acting a bit funny, or maybe you're using a virtual machine like me. So if you have a bare bone use Ubuntu or Kali install, then it may work better. So I've tried the GPS and GSM, for example. I didn't get the G GPS to work properly, but I did get a GSM signal that I could transmit even though it stopped after a while. But it was interesting to try nonetheless. If we want to run the GPS signal, we need to generate a file first with GPS SDR simulator, which I covered in another video with a Blade RF. So I've already git cloned the directory from GitHub. And also, you can also see the instructions for compiling it here. So it's very easy to compile. So in case you want to generate the signal, you just run the GPS SDR sim, and then you just follow the readme instructions. So for the GSM signal, you first need to extract the .x set file. You can easily do that in the GUI by just right clicking the file and then extract. You can also run that tar command, but I can't remember it right now. So in order to use that CF32 file, you need to run new radio companion and generate another file. So you need to make sure that you have a lot of space left on your device, at least five to 10 gigabyte preferably, because otherwise you will run out of space before you have generated the file to transmit. So you run new radio companion and the FL2K transmit GSM GSE file. And this may take a bit of time to load. So once it has loaded, we need to check the sample rate. By default, it's set to 138 million. I've set it to 100 instead. And you can also adjust the PPM if you want to. 
to make the signal more accurate. And you can see here where the file will be saved to. And that is the file that you have to transmit with the FL2K program. So if you just run it, then we can take a look at the file while it's being generated. So we will go into the... We will just watch the file size with watch ls and then alh and the file location of that file. And as you can see, it's growing quite fast. And you will want to run this for a few minutes, so it's at least one gigabyte, preferably two gigabytes. And as you can see, it's using a lot of CPU as well. So you can't really run a lot of other tasks while you're doing this. So the so the frequency that it's going to transmit on is 925.4 megahertz. And you can see the command that you will need to run once you have generated a file. So as you can see, it's now 670 megabytes. And we're just checking that there are no other signals transmitted on this frequency first. This is just to make sure that there's not another much more stronger signal interfering with our signal. So when we think that we have generated a large enough file, then we can click the stop icon and then we can try and transmit it. In case you're very familiar with new radio, you can also edit the file as you wish. And in case you change it and you don't know how to change it back, then you can just do a git pull, for example, to get the version back or the latest version. So now I've stopped the program and I'm going to run the transmit command. And as you can see, it is transmitting a signal. And keep in mind that the receiving antenna on the left side, which is the RTL SDR, is right next to the device. So it's very, very close. So when it says repeat one and repeat two, that means that it's repeating the signal. But if you're just doing this for test purposes, then it's good enough. Now I couldn't make it I couldn't see I couldn't make my phone see the signal or this network, unfortunately. But it was interesting nonetheless. And I think that you could probably use GRGSM, for example. So you could use LiveMon, for example. So that would be pretty cool. But that's mostly just to debug the signal that you're sending. Anyway, stay tuned and subscribe.